cannot capture the story of you imaginations are short of you pictures are frail in describing your words your essence is love and light words cannot capture the story of you imaginations are short of you Just a frail in describing your words. Your essence is love and light. Words cannot capture the story of you. Imaginations are short of you. Pictures are frail in describing your words. Your essence is love and life. I am that I am indescribable God, indescribable God, indescribable God. I am that I am unmistakably God. You are God.
everywhere in the house just exalted oh you are god oh yes you are yeah. you are god yes you are from age to age we declare that you eternity to eternity you remain the same you are God you are God yes you are nobody compares to you you are God you are God yes you are almighty God, Almighty God, our generation shall praise your name. Our generation shall praise your name. Our generation shall praise your name. Our generation shall praise Is anybody part of that generation? Say our generation. Our generation shall praise your name. Our generation shall praise your name. Our generation, our generation shall praise your name. Our generation shall So just show me the way that I may follow. Show me the way that you have trod. Show me the way that I may follow. See, I've been beaten and battered and broken and torn, but I'll not stop until I find you. Just show me the way that I may follow. Show me the way that you have trod. Show me the way that I may follow. See, I've been beaten and battered and broken and torn, but I'll not stop until I find you. Just show me the way that I may follow. Show me the way that you have drawn. Show me the way that I may follow. See, I've been beaten and battered and broken and torn, but I'll not stop until I find you. Just show me the way that I may follow. Show me the way that you have told. Show me the way that I may follow. See, I've been beaten and battered and broken and torn, but I'll not stop until I find you. Just show me the way that I may follow. Show me the way that you have told. Show me the way that I may follow. See, I've been beaten and battered and broken and torn, but I'll not stop. Till I find you. Our generation is in a quest. And our quest is for nothing less than the fullness of God. Because Ephesians chapter 3 promises us that if we're able to comprehend the height, the depth, the width, and the breadth of the love of God that passed knowledge, he said we will be filled with all the fullness of God. Tonight, like Pastor Jakes, I came for people who are hungry. And our quest has gone beyond what God can do. I was speaking in a meeting last week and I told them, I've been married to my wife for eight years. She knows. We have never agreed to receive anything. We have never stood believing God for anything. 
We have never prayed for anything in the eight years we have married. And we have lacked nothing. Because if you seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness, everything will be added to you. I'm not saying. I thank God for the crop of ministers that God brought for this year's meeting. And I thank God for my brother on us. I thank God for every minister of the gospel, the ones I've met and the ones I've not. But I tell you the truth, a new day is upon the church. And that new day takes our eyes off what God can do and fixes it on who he is. You heard Pastor Ovia saying it. And Enoch walked with God and was not. For God took him. And the writer of the book of Hebrews was testifying concerning Enoch. That if Enoch walked with God and was not for God took him. Before then he must have had a testimony that he pleased God. And without faith it is impossible to please God. For he that must approach God must believe that he is. And then that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Boss, we need to understand the second part of that scripture. What is the rewarder of them that diligently seek him? What is the reward for quest? If you seek me, you will find me. The quest of a man who is seeking God. You heard him say it, that God has a hiding nature. Let me lay it for you from scripture. The Bible says it is the glory of God to conceive. But there are certain people who are referred to in scripture as kings. And their honor is to search out what God has conceived. So I like to tell people, there's no mystery left in God. If it is still a mystery, it's because you have not searched. Because tonight, we're going to enter into that river. That river is our destination. Now, if you were here last year, you know. How many people follow me? It's not my business. The message I preached here last year went viral. People called me from all around the world because they watched it online. And people were sleeping while the message was going on. Under the atmosphere of the spirit. I know your problem is lack of hunger. For blessed are they that hunger and thirst after righteousness. Because they shall be filled. You cannot be around the atmosphere of infilling. That sleep has not been born. Listen to me. In our quest for God, we have fallen into the hands of thieves and robbers too many times. I discovered that when people call phone number and your eyes are awake, actually your real quest was a quest for God. Somebody just sat down on top of that quest, perverted that quest, and made you think that in calling your phone number, you had a revelation of God. Until you stayed there long enough, if you were looking for God, you wake up one day and discover you are thirsty. Too many of us in our quest for God, we are falling into the hands of bandits. But blessed be God who is faithful and merciful. So when you hear me say those words, they are not... They are not common words to me. One day under the atmosphere of the spirit, I stood and my eyes got open. And then I saw that there were thick black clouds all over me. But then I saw a little pot, just one little portal that had opened and light was shining through it. And no angel needed to tell me that it is the path that Jesus himself passed. So if you looked at the clouds, it looked hopeless. Except for the fact that there is one who is the author and the finish. As I beheld the part he passed, I didn't compose. The song came out of me. Just show me the way that I may follow. Show me the way that you have drawn. Show me the way that I may follow. See, I've been beaten and battered and broken and torn, but I'll not stop until I find you. My quest is not for any blessing. When Jacob arrested God that night and he said to him if you don't bless me I will not let you go what was Jacob looking for what is the blessing of God 
Jacob was just coming out from his father-in-law's house and the Bible said that by wisdom of whether Kony or the revelation of the spirit Jacob had taken over the entire flock of his father-in-law so Jacob had become a mightier nation than the man he served so when Jacob was saying if you don't bless me I'll not let you go he wasn't looking for money he was already rich what was Jacob looking for it was the answer you found in the mouth of God he said you are a prince with God and with men because you have contended with me and you have survived what does it mean to contend with God somebody has to say tonight I will not let you go and when you are saying I will not let you go you are not talking about no I need admission when God takes advantage of a man admission is nothing to him a wife is nothing tonight let's save ourselves all those distractions and go straight to the point because tonight we are on a quest and the atmosphere is set and I wish I could just crave your indulgence and take you through the story of the river in scripture because let me tell you the end result of delving in that river is that when you come out you will see the things that only God sees I told you yesterday that this night will be a night for drunkards you can't be in your right senses here it's not the right place to be in your right senses because the things that require faith can only be done out of sense you can only be led into them tonight I'm looking for somebody who is hungry I'm looking for somebody who is thirsty I'm looking for somebody who wants to say Lord if it's not all of you I don't want anything else I don't Lord keep everything and give me you in getting you I have everything because I want to see your face I want to know your ways I want to touch your grace just so I can leave your days I want to see you I want to see you Lord I want to see your face I want to know your ways I want to touch your grace so I can live your days I want to see you I want to see you I want to see your face I want to know your ways I want to touch your grace so I can live your days I want to see you I want to see you I want to see your face I want to know your ways I want to touch your grace so I can live your days I want to see you I want to see you Lord, I want to see your face I want to know your ways I want to touch your grace So I can live your days I want to see you I want to see you I want to see your face I want to know your ways I want to touch your grace so I can leave your days I want to see you I want to see you Lord I want to see your face I want to know your ways I want to touch your grace so I can leave your days I want to see you say I want to see you I want to see you Say, I want to see your face. I want to see your face. I want to know your ways. I want to touch your grace so I can live your days. I want to see. I want to see you. I want to see. Say, I want to see your face. I want to see your face. I want.
want to know your ways I want to touch your grace So I can live your days I want to see Say I want to see you Say I want to see you 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 I want to see you. I want to see you. I want to see you. Oh, I want to see you. Oh, I want to see you. It's a desire. Say, I want to see you. I want to see you. I want to see you. I want to see. Say, I want to see you. Say I want to see you. Say I want to see your face. I want to see your face. I want to know your ways. I want to touch your grace so I can live your days. I want to see. Does anybody want to be like Jesus on the face of the earth? I want to see. Say I want to see your face I want to see your face I want to know your ways I want to touch your grace So I can live your days I want to see you Say I want to see you I want to see you Say I want to see your face I want to see your face I want to know your ways I want to touch your grace so I can live your days. I want to see. Say I want to see you. Say I want to see your face. I want to see your face. I want to know your ways. I want to touch your grace so I can live your days. I want to see you. I want to see you. There's a site the church has now that God has a problem with. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 6, If the light that be in you be darkness, how gross is that darkness? That means darkness can provide some sort of light. Darkness can provide some sort of direction. Darkness can provide so in Revelation chapter 3, we caught it when we want sinners to come in. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hears my voice, but you will discover that Jesus was not talking to sinners. He was talking to the church. He said, and unto the angel of the church of the Laodiceans, right? This sin said the amen. The faithful and true witness. The beginning of the creations of God. I know your works. How that you are neither hot nor cold. He said, I would that you were hot or cold. But because you are neither hot nor cold, I will spew you out of my mouth. We have given several descriptions for lukewarmness. But hear God's description. He said, for you have said, I am rich. I have increased in goods. And I have need of nothing. But from where I stand, you are poor, you are blind, you are wretched, you are miserable, you are naked. Then he said, I counsel you to buy of me gold, refined in the fire, so that you may be rich. He said, and take white raiment from me, so that you can cover the shame of your nakedness. Then the third counsel, he said, wash your eyes with myself, so that you may see. So the church can be saying, I am wealthy. I have increased in material goods. But then God looks at your material goods and he said, you are rich. It's not because your material goods are so small. It's because your definition of wealth is different from his definition of wealth. Please follow me. Because we are taking a journey to the river tonight. For everyone who is interested in going, let's go there. 
And if we come out from the river, we must come out seeing. So God said to them, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. That was the remedy for their state. He said, If, if God uses the word if, that means God was not sure that in the state that the church was in, even if he knocks on mountain forever, he wasn't sure they were here. But he said, If any man hears my voice, he said, when he opens the door, I will come into him and I will eat with him. What does it mean to eat with him? Because these are important questions we must ask the next time we confront scripture. What does Jesus mean? In Matthew chapter 24, you catch a glimpse of what he was saying. Because he said, blessed is the servant whom when his master comes back, he finds him distributing bread to other servants like the master commanded him to. He said, but cursed be that servant who will say to himself, because my master tarries. Then he gets up. Then the Bible tells you three things he begins to do. He begins to beat his fellow servants. One. Then number two, he begins to eat and drink with the drunken. What does he mean to eat and drink with the drunkard? Jesus described it in Matthew chapter 6. He said, for after these things do the Gentiles seek. When the church begins to see the world the way the world sees the world, then there's a problem. So we need to return to blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stand in the way of sinners, nor sit in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law. We need to start to check where again we draw our principles. That's the reason why we are replacing worship for excitement. They are two different things. Worship is getting to that throne. One day I got up in the agony of my heart and I said to God, I said to him, see, you see me, Lord, this is my own prayer. Just take me and lead me to the place where I find rest. Take me and lead me to the place where mercy dwells. Take me and lead me to the place where eagles soar. There's a place where lions feast. It's the place where I'm with you. In that place, it's just me and you. No other kind of animal appears where lions are eating. No bird appears at the height where an eagle is sorry. We're competing with the world too much because of the pedestals we have stood upon. So when my heart is overwhelmed, please lead me to the rock that is higher than I. Take me to the rock that is higher than I. <laughs> And when my heart is overwhelmed Please lead me to the rock That is higher than I When Satan tells me I'm not succeeding Just take me there That is higher than I When the world tells me I'm losing something by following you Just when I, my heart is overwhelmed That is higher than I. There is a rock that is higher than I. That's higher than I. That is higher than I. Higher than I. That is higher than I. If you would bear with me a few more minutes, I want to show you in scripture. Reverend, while you was teaching today, made reference. In fact, the first thing I heard prophetically was when he said, there will be a tsunami in this place. This night is not anywhere near over. My problem is that certain people will join us later, but they will not understand where we are. 
because if you are sincere to yourself like Jacob you can see a ladder and angels ascending and descending and one that looks like a son, the son of man at the top of the ladder but when you wake up in the morning if you are sincere to yourself you tell yourself that the Lord was here and I didn't know it is that the kind of experience somebody will come out from and say the Lord was here and I did not know it because actually the presence of the Lord is the right response what Jacob discovered was that he did not respond to God the way God wanted him to respond to him so being in the atmosphere of the spirit is not sufficient knowing the right response by reason of walk with God you must know the right response and you must know how to provoke God by the right response Jacob got up in the morning. If some of us got out of that kind of experience, we we'll write three books. One, the ladder and the principle of ascending and descending. Number two, the angels and how they look. Number three, the face of the Son of Man. And we'll be writing books about experiences we didn't have. That's why your desire cannot go beyond, Lord, I want to know you. Paul had written nine books of the New Testament. Then he stopped in Philippians and said that I may know him. Because the more I know you, the more I want to know you, Jesus, more of you. Say the more I know you, the more I know you. The more I want to know, the more I want to know you. Jesus, more of you. Say the more I know you, the more, the more, I, know you. The more I want to know, the more I want to know you. Jesus, more. Of you. One more time. Say the more I know you is the more I want to know Jesus more take it from the top say I want more of you I want Jesus! 
Say, I grew up in that generation too. Where our best songs were. It is the cry of my heart to follow you. It is the cry of my heart to be close to you. It is the cry of my heart to follow all of the days of my life. It is the cry of my heart to follow you. It is the cry of my heart to be close to you. It is the cry of my heart to follow all of the days of say all of the days of my life. 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 You know, my brother over here was describing a situation in John chapter 4. Because you need to see the river. When you see it, then you will determine how far you have gone. Whether you are ankle deep, knee deep, loins deep, neck deep, or you have been taken over. Because only them that have been taken over can see. But you see, there's an angel that must measure a thousand cubits. If the angel does not measure it, there's no movement. I'll tell you about him today. There's an angel of the Lord. He measures a thousand cubits. And that angel does not start to measure until he checks your desire. I will show you the mark. It's a history in scripture. You can trace the river through scripture. The first time you find the river is in Genesis chapter 2. And in Genesis chapter 2, the Bible told us that God planted a garden eastward in Eden. So the garden was not Eden. The garden was located somewhere in Eden. It was the east part of Eden that the garden grew in. So when you go further, you find that scripture says, and God caused a river to flow from Eden to water the garden. Some of you are looking at me like you have never read the Bible before. I have told everybody who cares to listen. The work of the pastor is not to study your Bible on your behalf. The work of the pastor is to bring light to what you have studied. So he's given a little entrance further than what you can see so that he can shed light upon what you have studied. That's why you turned us into gods. Because you won't go for what is freely yours. If I lift up my voice now and a deliverance happens here, some of you will change your DP this night. I'll become your display picture. But the Bible says these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name, they shall cast out. It's not this sign shall follow apostles. I told one of my friends, I said my greatest limitation is the title pastor. Why is it my greatest limitation? Anything you do, people will say it's because you are a pastor. So if you operate a dimension of God that is supposed to be available to every believer, they say, wow, that man of God. And even Jesus hates it when you look at him and you say, that man of God. Because what he wants is where he is, you may be with him also. I came to provoke whoever is hungry. That river, the Bible says, flowed from Eden to water the garden. Then when it has watered the garden, it breaks into four heads. Gihon, Pison, Hidikel, and Euphrates. Then the Bible spoke about one of those rivers and he said on the path of that river you find gold and the gold of that line, land is good. That's the reason why, forget the lie of the devil. There will always be treasure in the Niger Delta. Your land is too ravaged by water for God not to be merciful to you with resources. Uh, you need to know the principles of the mercy of God. If oil finished today in Nigeria, they will discover something again by the river. Oh, oh. See, I wish I was the one from the south south. You see, I'm saying it. You can't even say amen. You can't say hallelujah. You can't see, see how all of you are looking. Yes. I, 
Are you following me? Follow me. If you go to Ezekiel 47, I'm going to be touching the three scriptures simultaneously because one is Genesis chapter 2, the other one is Ezekiel 47, and the third one is Revelation 22. So you find it at the beginning, you find it somewhere in the middle, and you find it at the end of the Bible. It's the story of the river. Because we want to travel into it. I don't want to start doing mad things and you'll be looking at me. Go and say, ah, oh, oh, oh. You won't know what I'm doing. I'm changing levels. I wish I had a map. The Bible says that he planted a garden eastward and then he caused water to flow from Eden to water the garden. That means that the direction of the movement of the river was towards the east. If you go to Ezekiel 47, you find out that the Bible says that the, the river flowed eastward from the temple. There seems to me to be some kind of connection. And the Bible says somewhere in the center of the garden, God planted two trees. Now, if a river is coming from the west and flowing eastward through the garden, you know that what splits the garden was actually the river. So I can almost, I wish I could draw it for you. So the tree of life and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil grew by two sides of the river. Leave it. We'll talk about it someday. No, we need to talk about it today. It flowed from the temple, flowed eastward through the garden, and when it came out of the garden, it broke into four heads. And the Bible told us that there were two trees planted in the center of the garden. If you go to Revelation chapter 22, you'll find out that the Bible says, by the streams of river that flows from the temple of God, grew the tree of life. So the tree of life does not grow anywhere. It grows by the river. So Jesus will say to you, the words that I speak unto you, they are spirits and they are life. Because by Revelation chapter 22, you get to understand that the river is spirit. It's the Holy Ghost. So John chapter 7, Jesus stood on the last and the great day of the feast and cried out in a loud voice, If any man thirst, let him come to me and drink. And out of his belly, like the scriptures have said, shall flow rivers. This spake he concerning the Holy Spirit. <laughs> he was there from the beginning. So you will hear, and the Spirit of God hoovered upon the waters. What he was looking for was his habitation because he needed to break the waters to form river. Oh. Please follow me because we're on a journey into the river. So when man failed in Genesis chapter 3, you will hear that the Bible says, and God put an angel with a flaming sword. At the east gate into the garden if the river flowed eastward it means it, it means he entered the garden through the west gate and went out of the garden to the east gate the bible says that he put an angel there with a flaming sword to protect the way to the tree of life that means there was an indicator that made that if man returned, he will find his way. The indicator was the river. And I'll tell you the essence of the sword. The essence of the sword was that God swore that nothing that was carrying flesh will ever approach the tree of life again. So what's the key to approaching the tree of life? Simple. Let flesh go. If flesh dies from you, you get a little more access. Sorry, let me mumble it up. So, in Ezekiel chapter 47, you find out that the Bible says there was an angel that had a measuring line. He took me to the edge, the west edge. And then he measured a thousand cubits, brought me to the place of the measurement, and the waters were anchored. Why didn't he take me straight to the source of the river? It was because the more I yield to God, the more I qualify to approach the temple and the way to the temple is the river. So Jesus said to the woman in John chapter 4, I am thirsty. 
The first person who thirsted there was not the woman. The first person who revealed his thirst there was Jesus. And in the midst of the conversation, Jesus said, For such do the Father seek. So before you started your quest, the Father began his own. What actually qualifies you to come is that God was looking for you. So when you heard my friend Nathaniel saying, He loved me when I didn't care, but was patient till I came, running back into his arms. When you hear those kind of statements, don't be quick with them. Because what it means was that it wasn't that we first loved him. It was that while we were yet sinners, we weren't considering him when he died. I said we were not considering him. The first person who was thirsty there was Jesus. There was no record in that scripture. Actually, Jesus was thirsty and hungry. He was famished and he sent 12 adults to buy food for 13 men. Oh, you didn't hear me? Jesus sent 12 adults to buy food for 13 men because he knew that none of them would understand the basis of his interaction with this woman. This woman was about to quicken what had not come by the power of the age to come. There are certain things in scripture you cannot understand. How that it was always given to Gentiles and was never given to Jews. Because he came to his own and his own did not receive him. Then he turned and he said, as many as received. He gave them the power. Oh Lord, I wish somebody is with me tonight. I wish somebody is still with me tonight. Because we need to take a journey into that river. And sometimes you need to be able to worship God with some understanding. It was the psalmist who provoked it. Praise the Lord with understanding. So I don't think when we come and we're dancing here, we're wasting our time. Some of us are too adults to be wasting our time. It was the same way Michal said to David, the king of Israel undignifies himself like this. It was the first time God insulted anybody in the Bible. You have never seen it. David said it was the Lord who decided to honor me above your father. Oh, you didn't hear? Leave it. That's the only woman in the entire Bible who was barren. Every other woman that was indicated as barren in the Bible was a womb in waiting. And a womb in waiting is actually waiting for prophetic seasons. Like Anna. Anna thought she had a need. God in his mercy held back her womb from producing until she discovered that the need was not hers. It was God's need. If God had given Anna a child the first time she cried, she would have had a son for the competition with Penina. But God will patiently wait in his mercy until you see that the need is not first yours, the need is yours. The day Anna discovered that God needed a prophet, God responded to Anna. God's hand has never been short. He has always been waiting for a generation that can see. And tonight we have come to wash our eyes with eyes out. Because if you read Ezekiel chapter 47, you will find out that when the river overflowed him and he came out, he suddenly began to see trees by the river that he didn't see when he was standing on the other end. Then he could tell you, wherever the river went, it brought healing to the nations. So he could now tell you the purpose for the river. The church has been, has received the Holy Ghost for too long. But all we received him for was Rama, Mama, Mama, Sha, 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 Sha. And then we shake and dance. In fact, one of my friends said it in a beautiful way. That when the Holy Ghost came in Acts chapter 2, the people stood, the room shook. Now when the Holy Ghost comes, the people shake, the room stands. We need to have some at shaking experiences again of the Holy Ghost. We need to then know that the Holy Ghost didn't come to satisfy our craving. They said the Spirit is here. Everybody will start sniffing like they have drunk pepper. The Holy Ghost is not in your sniff. Actually, when you grow in knowing Him, His presence will hold you. It will bring you to calm. It, it brings you to attention. 
the highest point in the manifestation of the Holy Spirit is a stillness. So be still, my child, because I know your ways. And I will guide for my name's sake. Plunge in the reef, of my grace, rest in the arms of my embrace. My response is, I come to draw, 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 draw from you again. Yeah, yeah. I come to draw, 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 draw from you again. Yeah, yeah. Come to draw, come to draw, 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 draw from you again. Yeah, yeah. I've come to draw, I've come to draw, 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 draw from you again. Yeah. Does anybody want to draw from the rivers of life? I've come to draw. Jesus was the first to be thirsty. When he said to the woman, give me water to drink. And she said, you being Jew, how do you ask me, a Samaritan, for water? And then he said, if you knew the gift of God, and he who it is who asks you for a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you water that will quench your thirst forever. She looked at him and she said, you don't have anything to draw it. How do you get this water? <laughs> Let me paraphrase. And Jesus said to her, He says, if you come to me, I'll give you water to drink. And the water you drink will become in you a well. You can't drink a well. You can only drink maybe a cup. But you see, there's a self-generating power in that water that when it goes into you, it digs within you a well. So every time you taste God, what he does is he shows you a deeper need. Because the principle of a well is that you cannot reach the water until you draw. So when you are throwing down to draw, you are actually revealing your need. But Jesus then said that that water will not remain a well, it will spring up. So in this case, when you throw a need in, you will not use a need to draw. As soon as your need hits the surface of the water, the water springs up at you. All we need to do is to make sure our hunger and thirst is complete. Once our hunger and thirst is full, if we can touch the surface of that water, an avalanche of God's river will carry us and then we'll suddenly see ourselves doing things that we didn't think we could do. And Jesus said to her, if you knew the gift of God. And they ended the conversation at the time is coming and now is. When true worshippers will worship the Father, in spirit and in truth for such do the father seek to worship him such do the father seek to worship him such do the father seek suddenly it dawns on us that it is the father who is in the quest and hear me child of God 
because we're about to plunge into the river and I came to say to you tonight depending on your thirst the angel of God is willing to measure a thousand cubits but God has sworn no flesh will come into my presence that's why we have asked you to cleanse your desire to cleanse your quest that's why we have said to you you can't come look here looking for a miracle you have to come looking for the miracle worker and you didn't come to seek him for a miracle you came to seek him for who he is you will be living daily in miracles I sat with the guys in Port Harcourt two days ago and I said to them, I, my own e, my own dependence on God has become so bad. If I sit down in the afternoon and I think of chicken, somebody will be coming to my house, you buy it. I'm not joking. If you look at me, you will know that there's no time tea when I don't have enough money to buy chicken at will. Less than two weeks ago, I was going to Eckert to preach. I forgot my belt at home belt. The reason why I forgot it was because I wore a house sack of tan. And you know we don't use belt, we use rope. So I tied it with the rope and I forgot that I needed a belt. So I didn't pack a belt. One of my guys took me to the airport he was supposed to take my car just so that he can bring it when I return. So I asked him, is he wearing a belt? He said yes. I said he should give me, I need it. I'm going to minister. And you know I can't minister and talking without belt. So he gave me his belt, but his belt was saggy. So I wore the belt and I was not comfortable. I was more concerned about the belt than about the one I came to worship. So I removed the cloth and flew the cloth over the belt so that I could focus. And I came out for the meeting with my cloth flown. We had a powerful time. And we left. I went to see my host. I was late at about 11.30. They said, a young man is looking for you outside, sir. He came with a pure Italian leather belt and said the Lord told him not to rest until he gives me this. He knows my name. I don't know if he knows your own, but my own. See, when, when you get to that place, you will enter into rest. Nothing will worry you. I, did, I found a scripture. I found a scripture in the Bible. I'd read it for years. I didn't find it until that day. The Bible says, For even the hairs on your head are numbered and none fall without his notice. I'd always read that scripture as even the hairs on your head are counted. Until I saw that it was not counted, it's numbered. So if you wake up to Kombi in the morning, and three strands of your hair cut in the comb. There's an angel whose responsibility is to go back to heaven and say, God, hair number 112,383. Hair number 286,624. And hair number four were the three hairs that cut. Then God will tell him, what are you waiting for? Replace it. See, if God is concerned about things as useless as my hair it is an insult on God for me to enter a service worried there's only one commandment between me and God cast all your cares upon me because I care one day God said it to me in a very painful way he said Chito, come let's decide today between me and you who will care because he cannot be caring and you are caring he that watches over you does not sleep or slumber. So if you have a sleepless night, you wasted his sleepless night. If God didn't sleep, it is so that I can sleep. That problem has not been born. I said that problem has not been manufactured. My father died, I got up and danced. My mother died. The service turned into a prayer. I went to house on the rock about you and the pastor told me. He said, you know what connected me to you? I said, no, sir. He said, I found one of your messages online. And I heard the way you were praising God so badly. 
Then you said to them in the service, yesterday my wife gave birth to a baby and everybody celebrated and everybody shouted. And I said, oh, wait, wait, wait. The baby went back to be with the Lord. He said he couldn't believe that I even came for the service. That baby died two weeks after my mother. I'm not heartless. I just know God. I was the dearest son of my mother at the point of her death. They say, God, you know who ministers comfort. Oh, Lord. Did you hear me? I said, they say, God, you come to know who can minister comfort. I warned my wife. I said, better don't die. In your best interest. Because if you get to heaven, give me six months, I'll marry again. So it provoked her. She must have said, I will not die. I said, better for you. I said, I'm not planning to kill you, but I'm just giving you advance notice. If you wake up and decide to die, give me six months. I told her, I said, if I spend more than six months before I marry again, it's my children I'm considering. Because I'll only be looking at the woman and thinking, can she bear children that she did not carry? Yeah, people don't have sense. If you want to marry a man whose wife is dead, he's not the man you should take care of. Take care of the things that matter to him. Simple sense, root kind of sense. Yes, in church, don't have. You now go and wear skirts and tear it, and I'm coming like this. Any man that has sense knows that it's not turn skirt you're looking for. If the man pursues you for your turn skirt, both you and him are senseless. What you were born is brainless. See, I want us to close today. And what I mean by close, I mean let's enter the river. See, I've come to draw. <laughs> so when I throw my draw, and it touches the surface of that river. The river springs up at me. When he comes, you can't control yourself. See, if all I did tonight was throw this teaching, you can take this principle home. If you take this principle home, you create an atmosphere of the spirit every time. Somebody asked me, why do you lift up your voice every time and God seems to respond? I said, God does not have favor rights. I say it's not about voice. It's the heart. If your voice is as croaky as the disco, if you got the heart feel this call has, uh, make us one heart, make us one mind, make us one. Who sings like that? I looked at my pastor one day. I said to him, sir. Let's tell ourselves the truth. Your voice is not sweet. Hallelujah. God most high. You are Jesus Christ. You are Hallelujah. Who sings like that? Yahweh. I told him he should be writing the songs and giving us to sing it for him. Then you will know it is not sweet voice. God doesn't respond to a sweet voice. Hey! He, he doesn't respond to a sweet voice. He, that's not what calls to him. That's not what calls to him. What calls to him is the state of the man's heart. <laughs> a pastor wrote a, a song, a new song recently. He said, in the morning, new mercies fall on me. And they remain until the setting of the sun. What a wonder and a beauty to behold. When in the eyes of every man, you are the holiest of all. In the morning, new mercies fall on me. And they remain until the setting of the sun. What a wonder and 
a beauty to behold when in the eyes of every man you are the holiest of all say there is no one there is no one holy as the lord he on earth and in the heavens up above there is no one no one holy as the lord there is no one holy as the lord there is no one there is no one holy as the lord he on us and in the heavens up above there is no one no one holy as the lord there is no one holy as the lord see when you get to that point then you will discover that in jesus getting his needs satisfied there was no record in that scripture that that woman gave Jesus water to drink. When his disciples returned with food and they gave him, he had lost appetite for the food. Because he said, I have meat that you know not of. For my meat is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work. So hear me. When a man enters into that river, he will then understand why Jesus said, wait in Jerusalem until you be endued with power. Don't go to represent me. Wait until the river is poured upon you. Because you will receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And then, then you will be empowered to witness me accurately. In Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, and to the uttermost parts of the earth suddenly it dawns on you that when Jesus said my will is to do, my meat is to do the will of him that sent me and finish his work truth is when you come out of that river you will not have a will your will will be to do his work because that's the only way you will be giving him water to drink if God looks at you today and he says I am thirsty what he means is I'm looking for people who will accurately represent me. So when he satisfied the thirst of the woman, she entered into the city. And she said, come and see the man who told me everything I've done. Sorry. The natural response in Samaria to that statement should have been, who doesn't know what you have done? Everybody in the city must know the woman who has had five husbands and who is camping with the sixth. So every woman in the city must hate her. And every woman in the city will beat her husband up at home if she finds him just with that woman on the street. So who doesn't know what you have done? What exactly brought the people? Because the Bible says the entire city followed the woman to the well. It was the abundance of the river that she has taken. When she came to them, they discovered something has changed about this woman and we need that change too. At that point, nobody was ready to accuse her. Everybody wanted what she had. So when you hear me say, I want to see your face. I want to know your face. I want to touch your grace just so I can live your days. What God is looking for is accurate representation on the earth. So to give God water now to drink means to wait upon the Holy Spirit to fall upon you so that you can represent him at you. Because if he be highly lifted up, he draws all men. When they came by reason of her stream and they got to him, they said, we now believe not just for what you have told us, but because we have seen him for ourselves. 
Tonight, I came to provoke the people who have drinks to offer. It's from the table of my heart, oh Lord. From the table of my heart, oh Lord. I prepare for you a drink of love. I prepare for you a drink of love from the table of my heart oh lord from the table of my heart oh lord fix your eyes on me i prepare for you a drink of love i prepare for you a drink of love drink from my heart drink from my heart drink from my heart drink from my heart I have a drink to offer drink from my heart I have a drink to offer drink from say I have, I have a dream to offer drink from say I have a dream, have a dream to offer say I have a dream to offer <laughs> Oh Lord, I have a dream to offer. Say, I have a dream to offer. Dream from my heart. Oh Lord, I have a dream to offer. Dream from my heart. Oh, I have a dream to offer. From my heart, oh Lord, I have a drink to offer. I offer, oh, I have a drink to offer. Lord, I offer. Say, I have a drink to offer. Lord, I 
comes to him, he only know why it's cast away. Say, I have a dream. I have a dream. Say, I have a dream. Say, I have a dream.
the angels bow before your throne. Oh, oh. All the saints adore you. We're casting off our golden crowns just to say.
Oh, hallelujah. 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 I will cling to you. <laughs> I'm not letting go. I'm not letting go. I'm not letting go of your hands. Let the whole world fade. Oh, majestic one. I'm not letting go of your hand. Say, I will cling. I will cling to you. I'm not letting go. I'm not letting go. I'm not letting. Of your hands, let the whole world fail. Oh, majestic one, I'm not letting go. Of your hands, one more time, I will cling to you. I will cling to you. I'm Let the whole world fade, oh majestic one, I'm not letting go of your hands, say I'm not letting go of your hands, say I'm not letting go. <laughs> Of your hands, Lord, I'm not letting go. Of your hands, Lord, I'm not letting go. I'm not letting go. I'm not letting go. I'm not letting go. It's for someone who feels he's losing faith. Of your hand. Say I'm not letting go. Of your hand. My heart. Take control as I learn to walk your ways. So day by day, as I follow through my devotion, be unto you my heart. My so please stay control as I learn to walk your way so day by day as I follow through my devotion beyond My heart, my soul, please take control 
as I learn to walk your way. So day by day, as I follow you, my devotion be unto you. My devotion, my devotion be unto you. Let my devotion, my devotion be unto you. Let my devotion, my devotion be unto you. My devotion, my devotion be unto you, be unto you. in the calm of your presence I am listening Lord I am still I am quiet I am yours in the calm of your presence I am listening Lord I am still, I am quiet, I am yours. I, Jesus, the desire of my heart. Jesus, say Jesus, you're the longing of my soul. 
Here I stand to tell the world what you mean to me. You are Jesus, the longing of my soul. Jesus, my sweet Jesus, the desire of my heart. <laughs> Jesus, my sweet Jesus, you are the longing of my soul. Here I stand to tell the world who you are to me. You are Jesus. The true longing of my soul. Jesus, sweet Jesus, the desire of my heart. Oh, Jesus, my sweet Jesus, you are the longing of my soul. Here I stand to tell the world who you are to me you are jesus the longing of my soul that's why i love you now i love you tomorrow i love you forever i love you lord I love you now I love you tomorrow I love you forever I love you Lord Say I love you now I love you now Love you tomorrow I love you tomorrow Forever Love you tomorrow, yeah. 